razie gromkimi brawami zaprośmy naszych, nasze gwiazdy. Naszych przedstawicieli Hogwartu i nie tylko. Na scenę zapraszam. Devona Murray. Devon, gdzie jesteś? Jak na magika przestało, chyba wysadził się w powietrze i zniknął. Zapraszamy, Devon. Ok, Devon, come on, everybody's waiting on you. Hello. I od razu Hello. pojawił się z nieoczekiwanym Hello. gościem. Sorry. Sorry you, you, about that. You, you guys destroy all my preparations. There was only for sorry. each of you. So w takim razie poproszę filmy naszych dwóch innych uczestników panelu. You destroyed everything. And, and I'm right now I'm scared that I'm start talking and they will put the movies on. Nobody will hear us. Okay, guys. Hello in Warsaw. Hello on Warsaw Comic Con. How are you guys? Good. Great. So happy Very to be good. here. Thank you. So much fun so far. Is this working? Yes. Yes, it is. You know that everybody was waiting for you. I, when I was talking to people over here, most of them have a crush on you. Even oh, really? then. Sorry, Still? Uh, cheers, guys. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say, mate? Nobody came here to see me, so... You three are the lucky ones. I came here to see you. Aww. So you're second alf after Alfie Allen. Yay. <laughs> okay, guys, I want you're to... You're gorgeous too, by the way. Yeah, thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I want to take from you some scoops about uh, working on Harry Potter. How did it all begin for you? Uh, because I know that not all the uh, characters that you were casting on were your uh, intent ones. So how did it start for you? So I was 16 in school, and I went to an open audition. Huh? <laughs> I went to an open audition to play one of the Patel twins, but we didn't know which Patel twin it was for. And then on my 16th birthday, I got told I got the part. But because I'm taller than Dan, I had to play Padma because in the Your Ball scene, I danced with Rupert. So that's why I was Padma and not Pavati. You were glad for this switch or no? Yeah. I mean, You're I was right now, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah. Dan was just a lot shorter than me, so dancing at the old ball, it didn't work. So I had to play Padma. Yeah. Uh, I was 11 years of age, and I didn't know who Harry Potter was or what Harry Potter was. And I got sent over to London for a screen test, and I thought I was meeting Harry Potter. So I fly over with my mom. You know he's not real. <laughs> I know he's not real now. But uh, I walked on set, I walked straight past Daniel, Rupert, and Emma, and I walked over to uh, the director, Chris Columbus. But I thought his name was Harry Potter. So I went over to the director, and I was oh, like, Dad. hi, Harry, nice to meet you. And they were looking for a stupid Irish guy, and I think they found it <laughs> that day. But, uh, you know, originally my c character was actually cast as an English boy. And J.K. Rowling and the producer said, no, he's an Irish character. He's got to be played by an Irish kid. So I was just very lucky. I was in the right place at the right time. And it was supposed to be an all-British cast. It was supposed to be an all-British cast, but you're not British. Well, you see, they say it was an all-British cast, but there was myself. There was Richard Harris, again, who was another Irish actor. Mm -hmm. Donald, Brendan. Well, Donald and Brendan, they all came in later. But uh, yeah. there was a lot of Irish ties on the very first movie. And I used to hate that. Every newspaper would say, It's an all British cast. All British, all British. cast. I, no, I'm Irish. <laughs> Come on, lads. <laughs> and for you? Uh, I was 17, and um, I originally auditioned to play Percy Weasley. Uh, <laughs> which would have been, which was interesting. But as soon as I, I, I prepared the audition for Percy Weasley, and as soon as I walked into the room, um, Janet Hershenson, who the cast the first film, just went, oh no, you're much more of an Oliver Wood. Um, which I didn't, I didn't see it, but I'm okay, fine, I'm not gonna argue. Uh, but uh, am I glad? I don't know. It'd have been, Percy would like much more different for me as a character, so it would have been interesting to 
to do that if we move about departure and we'll be changing the accent and, and everything. Yeah, I could see their here. reaction on his face. It was like, what? Yeah, no, yeah. you wouldn't have been. No. I would have been an amazing Percy. I am a chameleon. <laughs> yeah, no, you, you would have done good, but I don't think, no. No. A Chris but does Percy. Yeah, a Chris does Percy. Yeah, Chris does Percy. Yeah. <laughs> And I met with Jason Isaac like like last week when he was promoting Discover, uh, Star Wars Discovery, uh, taking some scoop about you guys, and uh, he told me that you guys are allowed to do some um, your own things on the on the set. Like you could say, I want to look my character a little bit different that uh, there is on the sketch. Is it true? Uh, oh, I, that, that may have become more true towards the towards end. I mean, the end. like yeah. seven, at 17, walking onto the biggest movie ever, I was just like, yeah, but fine, I'll wear, yeah, I'll wear a jumper, <laughs> sure. Uh, on the third movie, uh, once Chris had left, he'd done the first two movies, and then Alfonso came on, he had his own imagination. He wanted to uh, make Harry Potter older for the older kids that were growing up with it. And with that, he wanted to change lots of different things and make it more scary and make it more, I don't know, like. Just different. Mexican. Mexican. Make it his own. So uh, he, said, he asked me, I had a beard, a really big beard. He's like, oh, you got more beard than I do. Let's keep some of that in Harry Potter. So I was like, yeah, great. Then I was wearing two rings at the time. God, them rings. Them rings. Them rings. But uh, he loved the rings that I was wearing. And I was like, yeah, can I keep these? And he's like, yeah, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. And it was the worst thing in the world because I absolutely hate the rings <laughs> by like the fourth movie. And I still had to wear them for the rest of the movies. And then he had like different styles. Like he wanted Seamus to be like really scruffy. Chap. His tie, remember my tie? Chap. My tie is literally like that big. And then like the end of it used to hang down between my legs. <laughs> yeah. so it would always be like sticking out at the bottom. Uh, yeah, but like Alfonso changed an awful lot. And then the other directors, Mike Newell. Mike Newell and, and David, David Yates as well. I mean, I came in when Mike Newell was, and he was like the epitome of a British director. Um, I played a twin, so me and Shafali, we had to look exactly the same. Like, everything was the same. Like, we had a beauty spot drawn on each, symmetrical. We had the same hair. She had a wig, because I had naturally long hair. It was like past my bum, and they had to give her a wig. Um, but when we were a bit older, I think we had our own hair and we had our own makeup. We, they lost the beauty spots and we were just ourselves. So I think as we go older, I think we could... We had more of a say on our outfits. I wish I had a say on my Yule Ball outfit. I hated it. Yeah, yours was terrible. I hated my Yule Ball outfit. Wasn't yours orange or something? Why? Orange. I look like a fruit salad. Do you know them, like, sweets? <laughs> yeah, them fruit exactly salad sweets. Because like. Emma and everyone had such beautiful outfits. And then... Yeah, I wasn't happy with my Yule Ball outfit. Mm. And I've well, seen all the memes that are out now. It's actually really funny. Because you started in a very young age, and uh, when was the point when you realized that Harry Potter is the one movie that is going abroad and everybody starts to recognize you? Yeah. They watch their, him like in every country probably in the world. Yeah. Everybody know the Harry Potter movies. Yeah. It's sort of slowly dawned on us over the process of making the first one, I think, how huge it was going to be. Like, when I took the job, I had no concept of the scale of the thing at all. Um, then when we started getting fan mail before the film was out, it was, it was like, pretty oh, weird. that's, that's yeah. strange. Um, and then, the owl came with the letter? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> and then uh, when we went to the premiere for the first film in Leicester Square, and there were like 10,000 people in the middle of London, that, yeah, I think the premiere is for me as well. With written on them, screaming their heads yeah. off. That was like, oh, okay. Yeah. It's like Beatlemania. And the world premieres, they kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Like The last one we the had, last like, one mile red carpet from Trafalgar Square. The last Trafalgar world premiere was, Leicester. like, the full of Trafalgar Square. The full, it, when you go it to the premieres, it's insane. Like, how many people fly from abroad just to be there? And I think, for me, I think the world, the premieres. Yeah, I think, like... I remember myself and Matthew, like we were all brought into uh, publicity and we were all sat down and told, look, Harry Potter is going to be pretty big and... <laughs> kind of a big deal. Kind of a big deal. Kind of a big deal. And you're going to have uh, journalists coming along and like asking you questions, people pretending to be your friends that are only asking questions so they can write them in Hello. papers. <laughs> so uh, 
we were told to like always have our guard up and not to say too much. That day, myself and Matthew Lewis, who plays Neville Longbottom, we were in the hotel, and I think we were going down swimming or something. No, we were coming back from swimming in the hotel, and these two people got into the uh, elevator with us, and they started talking away, and myself and Matthew were nice guys. We were chatting away back, yeah. and then they started asking questions about Harry Potter, and we are like, uh-oh, what do we say? So we got off on like the wrong floor, and like, shit, we can't say anything. And that was the first time I saw Matthew were like, my God, like, this is crazy. And then the premieres, and people And you like, can go on holiday around. and be in the most randomest city and country, and somebody, I mean, the whole world knows Harry Potter. I'm guessing you're all Harry Potter fans, right? Yeah? Yeah. So it's, it's insane. I can go to the most random country, and there'll be someone who's like, and that's when you're like, oh my God, this isn't just in England, this is a worldwide thing. But they told you in front that when you sign the contract, it will take like seven or eight years of making? No. no. For me, <laughs> anyway, it was... Uh, they weren't sure whether Harry Potter was actually going to take off. So David Heyman, the producer, he bought the rights, obviously, to Harry Potter. And in the contract, it was negotiated for the very first two movies. I think, would you have been the same? Yeah, same for the first two. And movie. the way it was, we were definitely making the first movie, obviously and they weren't sure about the second movie. It all depended on how well the very first movie done. And then I think halfway through making the first movie, they realized like the fan base was so big. We'd go on location, we'd have like this many people waiting outside hotels and stuff like yeah. that. So they were like, yeah, I think we were, we're gonna make the second movie. We were already shooting the second one when the first one came out, right? No. I'm sure we were. November. The first movie came out in November. Yeah, and we were we started shooting number two, like October, November. No, it was 2001. in the new year. Okay, guys. M maybe you did. Doesn't matter. You know. <laughs> okay. No. So we had the read through. Ah. I remember this. We had the read through in Leaves and Studios in December because we were there was so much snow outside and we were all uh, snowball fight. All right. You weren't <laughs> invited. Okay, we. Started to talk about fans, so let's take some questions. Okay, Zapraszamy w takim razie do zadawania pytań. My name is Robert. How oh. does it feel to have fans? How does it feel to have fans, guys? <laughs> I mean, I speak for all three of us. Harry Potter fans are the most loyal, amazing fans that we have. They travel everywhere with us. and. You know, you guys all come to Comic Con and see us, and it's amazing. We have the best fans, so yeah, it's, it's great. So thank you, everybody, for coming to see us today. Uh, hi, Devon. Uh, my answer. Well, well, we're gonna. Sorry. Uh, I think we should answer that as well. Yeah. Or... Oh yeah. She, she said she's for answering all. for I all said... of you. So. <laughs> sorry. 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 Carry on. Did you manage to create a room? Excuse me? Like, room? room. No, I, I didn't. Ah. I, I've been trying since the age of 11 years of age to turn water into room. Like, how, how does that happen? Like, how did that get into a movie? An 11 year old boy in school trying to turn water into alcohol. And blowing stuff and up. And then blowing stuff it's up. It's incredibly that is the most racist. racist thing. <laughs> like, an Irish man, an Irish boy, alcohol, and blowing stuff up <laughs> at the height of. The IRA. <laughs> like, <laughs> but we already know that you're not <laughs> Irish in this movie. You're British. No. But uh, no, I haven't unfortunately turned water into rum yet. It's an ongoing process. <laughs> but you're still trying, as I understand. <laughs> still trying. So hi, my Hello. name my name is Julia, and I have a question for all of you. Uh, we had all of uh, devs in Harry Potter series. What do you think about your characters still alive in the age of Harry Potter? Oh. How do you feel that your character didn't die in the course of all the movies you survived till the end? I was kind of looking forward to dying, I'm not going to lie. I really wanted Seamus to blow up, like, while he's blowing up the bridge, he'd blow himself up or do something stupid like that. But, uh, at the same side, I'd... I really want to know what Seamus has done after Hogwarts. Like, he's, made water into rum, he's probably turned water into rum now. He's probably the biggest distributor of alcohol 
in the country. But uh, no, I think he'd have ended up in Australia. I, I just always thought Seamus would have gone to Australia with the other Irish. And making moonshine. Working, <laughs> making moonshine. No, working down in the mines, blowing shit up. Like, that's... What about you? Uh, well, yeah, I, um, well, it didn't make any difference to me that he didn't die because it wasn't there anyway. I, suppose, <laughs> so it's... I think my twin died. You think? I think. I mean, there was a big conspiracy because in the last film you see um, me cover up a, a dead girl with Professor Trelawney with Emma Thompson. And a lot of the fans were like, oh, her twin's dead. And I mean, Trevally didn't film the last two films, so maybe she died. Like, maybe. Yeah, I just went on alone. Surely you so, should know. Yeah. I should. Yeah, she died. That's me putting out. She's dead. <laughs> She's dead. <laughs> Hi, my name is Marisha. And Hi. Right now, do you have contact with other people from Cast of Harry Potter? Still? Uh, yeah. Very expensive. I, I do a bit, and it, it, one of the good things there's lots of I hadn't seen Dev for I don't know how many years before since um, the premiere. Yeah, before uh, we did a, a convention in Paris earlier this year, and um, I I'd never done these until this year, and uh, the best thing about it for me has been uh, just kind of hooking up with people that we had these experiences with, and I've never I never see otherwise. Yeah, we get to see each other in these shows and. Social media is great to stay in touch, and whenever we're in the same city as one another, we, we meet up. I meet up with the girls, I don't know about, I see these two now and again at these shows. Yeah, I don't really get to see very many people from Harry Potter now like that on Facebook and Twitter and Snapchat and all that, that's kind yeah. of it. <laughs> uh, I'm back in the bog arse of nowhere in Ireland, and everybody else is kind of doing their own things around the world, so we don't get to really see each other as much as we'd like to. Unless we come to conventions like this, we get oh, to we're meet. in the same town or something like yeah, that. Yeah, Georgina, who up. played Katie Bell, um, came we to Glasgow up. to do a show recently, and she came and stayed with me. That was nice. Yeah. Really? So, yeah, we meet whenever we can. And I'm curious, what is your reaction when you see your young girl selves still going through the TV? Because uh, Harry Potter is constant on oh, I hate um, it. many I, channels. It's so I hate it. It's the worst thing to see. I hate it. It's I, I so actually bad. watched the second Harry Potter no. last week. No. I haven't watched and that Christmas movie. Christmas is coming up, so you know it's going to be on the TV every day. Because yeah. during Christmas time, Harry Potter always is on the TV. I don't know about in Poland, but in the UK it is. No, we have uh, Home Alone. It's our Home thing. Alone? Yeah, yeah, yeah Home, Home Alone. Alone is like the best. Film. Best. Home Alone. Yeah. Chris directed that too. Yeah. yeah, he did. Oh, I hate it. I hate listening to it. I don't know. It's hearing your it's voice. So bad. Especially for a boy. Like when you're that age. Like Especially for a girl when you're that no. age so and you're in there. character. Like, that's bad. We I mean, like, people don't even know that's me. 12. I was 11 or 12, <laughs> and then all of a sudden... You look the same, Devon. My voice. with a beard. And my voice. <laughs> it's the voice that really annoys me. So, like, 11 and 12 years of age... You know you still sound like that, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, so you've got, like, a really, really squeaky voice. And then you go through puberty, and... And like coming more here a manly voice. and seeing the pictures that I sign, I look nothing like that anymore. I'm just like... Who's oh. that? That's not me. And the weirdest uh, language that you hear your character speak in? Everything but English. It's amazing. When they dub the film in different countries. Yeah, yeah you should hear it for Gaelic. It's I, don't, the I, don't think I, really? I don't think I've seen any oh, of it myself dubbed. I don't think I've seen that. Really? No. I've seen yeah. it in India. That is hilarious. I, How does he sound in, in, in India? I know. Everyone's got a male voice. Just, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> it's on me, everyone. <laughs> Hermione. Yeah. <laughs> okay, next question, please. Um, hi, I'm Ellie. And Hello. At first, I wanted to say that I was eight years old when my adventure with Harry Potter began, and now it's 11 years old. Uh, it's 11 years later, and I wanted to thank you for making this time magical for me. Aww. And I love you all so much. And thank you very much. My question is, which scene was the most emotional for you to make or to watch? Oh, tough one. I think it's kind of, for me, it's a toss up between two. So, Dumbledore, when Dumbledore died, that yeah, was terrible. Yeah, that was, that was. Do you remember? When the wand went the wand up, in the that air. was incredible seeing what we did. So, we shot it once, and. You only wanted to do it once for everyone's. But the producer, remember, David came over, and he kind of gave out to us all. He was like, hang on there, guys, this is it's your headmaster. You all look up to this guy, he's your yeah. hero, blah, 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 blah. And he put it all into perspective for us, and he says, look, we really need this to be heartfelt. So, action, and with that, 
everybody. everybody was crying. You know the scene where we all put the wow. ones up when Dumbledore dies? For us, yeah, that's a yeah. great scene. And then the very last scene. The last scene as well, because we all knew that we was We all it. cried we like all babies. We all cried Oh, God, cried. Was, I'm glad I wasn't there. That was yeah, I know. <laughs> no, it wasn't that. Oh, it was just man. like... We all knew it was about to happen. Like, this is it. This is like 10 years, more than that. Like, yes. it's done. And we all were there for the last scene because it was the courtyard scene. Yeah. Was it the courtyard the scene? The courtyard yeah. scene, yeah. And that scene we filmed for about two months, though. It was the longest last scene ever. But the problem because with of the that weather. was, do you remember? They'd tell us, okay, this is your last finish scene. day. Yeah, this is your last scene come back. on the 15th of come October. Back. Finish up, everybody be crying and hugging each other and kissing each and other. And we'll be back <laughs> the next week. And then we get a phone call to say, hey guys, you're back next week. Yeah. I'm so like, it was oh, hi drawn guys. out for so long. Yeah. And by the end, we were like, oh my God. Yeah. Just this is it. Now. Um, towards the end, we were like, okay, bye. Yeah. Well, <laughs> my saddest scene isn't, didn't make the cut, isn't in the film. Oh. It did. No, oh, no, the one no. no did. The, yeah, the, there's a sh we actually did a shot. Um, in the Battle of Hogwarts, where Neville hands Oliver Woods Colin Creevy's body, but it, oh. it wasn't the maybe on the DVD extra. I'm not seeing. Oh, I remember you actually there one day, yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, they, yeah, they didn't make it into the film. Yeah, but Isaac told me that uh, there are many of uh, those cuts that were not yeah. in the movie. Like yeah. for example, they shot his death, like everybody trampled on him. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. And after yeah. that, uh, he said, "Okay, I'm finished." After a week, they called him like, "You have to come back because uh, uh, Harry Potter." It's fighting in the next scene in the place that you died, but your body is not there, so yeah. we have to reshoot it. So, as I can understand, there are plenty of materials that is probably somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. there is. Ooh. Many variants of it. All right. Do you guys remember any spells? Any spells? Wingardium yeah. Leviosa. Leviosa. Yeah. Expecto Patronum. Yeah. I like that one. Stupefy. Lumos. Lumos. Uh, Avada Kedavra. Avada <laughs> Yeah. Wingardium. Yeah, that's all. I remember anyway. Dependio. I don't know. Octopus Repero. Octopus Repero. Isn't that the glasses? Yeah. Yeah. No one Harry breaks his glasses. And Hermione comes over and shows off. Right. Hi guys. Hello. Amazing to see you. Actually, I wanted to ask you a question. Which subject in Hogwarts would you find the most interesting for you personally, not for your character, but for you as you are? Probably potions for me. Yeah, potions. Yeah. Potions yeah. Are pretty... Who doesn't love, who doesn't want to yeah. be there making potions? I'd love... Potions and dark arts. Dark arts. Uh... It'd be cool to be in Snape's potions yeah, class no, as well. Just to be in Snape's class, that's probably what. Actually, no. Oh, you guys don't know. Um, what's his name? Lockhart? What was his name? Gilderoy Pro Lockhart. Professor Lockhart. So in his classroom, it was just so funny. Because he was this... Ah, oh, Kent Brown is just incredible. But, uh the character was just so much fun and like such a show off. Oh, that's... It's you. Live. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that was a fun set to be on because like, yeah, he was a show off and we just loved it. And I'm curious about the whole scenes when you're flying, chasing the, the, the stone. How does it... How much time did it take for them to put you on the ropes, sling you oh. left and right, left and right, left and right it's... to have the... That was magic. It was it's, magic. Yeah, it was a lot. It took a long time to learn to fly. Um, no, I mean that, yeah, that's an unbelievably laborious process. I think we were, I think we were shooting about seven seconds of actual screen time a day. So we worked. We worked for twelve hours for seven seconds. Of for twelve time. hours, we you were on the ropes. Uh, yeah, well, not there the whole time, but we worked twelve-hour days just doing that, just against the green screen in a in a, in a aircraft hangar, a place like this. Uh, after... And at the end, you would have like two tiny little clips, like seven seconds of film. And after that, you're sitting in cinema saying, "Damn, I look good." Yeah, it's, uh, you sit in the cinema, and it's just gone. It's, it's something you spend weeks on. It's just like you know, it's you half a scene in the movie. Okay, next question, please. Hey, all of you. Hello. Hi. <laughs> So, uh, firstly, uh, I want to say thank you for this great story. You made it really magical and wonderful. And so, I have a question to see. Um, yeah. Hey. <laughs> okay. um, what is your impression of Queen of Quidditch? And can you describe it? Sorry? Again? What is your impressions of Queen of Quidditch? My impressions of playing Quidditch? Yeah. Um, well, I, it's, it was a strange character for me to play because I was never like into the team sports at school, so being the, the school captain was quite funny. 
Um, it was great fun. I actually had a, I was, uh, I went to Orlando, you know, the theme park in Orlando. Um, no, You're going, going on Instagram <laughs> live. She can't not be the center of attention for one minute. <laughs> no. um, the, in Orlando, where they have the, the big Harry Potter theme park in America, there's a Hogwarts ride. And I went on it uh, when I was over there for an event a couple of months ago. And um, in, the middle of, in the middle of the ride, you suddenly find yourself on a broomstick flying over the Quidditch pitch, which completely blew my mind because I've never actually done that. Because you know, when we were filming it, it was just none of it's screen. there. You're just, you're just in a blue it, screen, Sean. and the camera does does the moving. Um, so suddenly, I was like completely overwhelmed because for the first time in my life, you know, 17 years later, there I was actually flying over the Quidditch pitch on a broomstick. So that was the first time that I kind of got that angle on it, and it was incredible. Thank you. Welcome. Mamy czas jeszcze na dwa pytania. So hello, I am Annie, and I just wanted to say that uh, Harry Potter is like my favorite. Uh, movies, favorite uh, book series of my childhood, so thank you for coming here to see thank us you. all. Thank, thank you. Thank you for coming. And I want uh, to give you a question about uh, which of the characters, of the actors, uh, do you most enjoy playing with? Was it Daniel? Was it maybe Emma? Or something like that? Maybe none of them? He's our friend. Everybody was terrible. I hated everybody. Uh, no, everybody was really cool. Like, we were all like 11 and 12 years old. We were all the of same age, age yeah. yeah, so it was. I mean, like, you, I you didn't go to school though, did you? I did go to school, excuse <laughs> no, me. You did. Uh, well, yeah. For me, anyway, like coming in at the very beginning, we were all like 11, 12 years of age, and Warner Brothers were amazing. They set up games rooms for us, they set up like we gave us all PlayStations and things like that, so we could all hang out together and get to know each other. Uh, go off and go to like WWF and things like that, so we could all bond. And I think doing that so early on, it kind of helped us throughout the whole movie, just the gel and be accepting to other people that were coming in. Yeah, like, so I came in on the fourth film, so by that point everybody had already been there for a few years, but you were really friendly. We were all really nice, like, uh, we all felt we didn't want you guys to feel awkward oh, coming in. That's nice. And these are no, all so in, nice people. In as the well. fourth film, a lot of new characters came. So we had Cedric Diggory, we had the Bow Batons, the Durmstrands, you know, because of the Yule Balls, there were a lot of new characters. So we got to hang around with everybody. It was great. And we had to go to school on set as well. So And learn how to dance together. And learn to dance as well for the Yule Ball. Yeah. Well, most of my big scenes were, uh, were, were with Dan when he was like. 12, 13, 11, 12, 13 in the first film, and I, um, we got on great. And I just remember being really, uh, really liking him and being really impressed with how, uh, how well he was coping yeah. with having such a huge yeah. thing on his on his shoulders. You know, it was uh, he, yeah, he took to it incredibly well, and I always loved working. You make great friends because that's all you know. We're just each other. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So, hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, my name is Martina, and I'm a huge fan of Damus. <laughs> Sorry? Uh, they was like pairing up Dean Thomas and uh, Samus Feeding. <laughs> and I... Dean Thomas and Seamus. Oh, Dean and Thomas and Seamus. Oh. Yes, and oh, right. I... Demus. Demus. <laughs> Demus. And uh, yeah. do you think that Demus can be actually a canon? Eh... Uh, an actual canon. Like, you know, like, Demus. Like, I don't know. Uh, Why? Were they yeah. really good friends or something? Were they what? So they were meant to be gay. Originally, Seamus and Dean were meant to be gay. No, my character went out with Dean Thomas in the book. Yeah, no, but in the very beginning. Huh? <laughs> no, yeah, originally Seamus and Dean were meant to be gay, and well, so, so I've heard. Yeah, yeah I think okay. so. I think so. Anyway, I'm not sure. Yeah, it could be a thing. But uh, yeah, it could be a thing. <laughs> okay, let me show you the most of events. Hey. Okay. Uh, there was a question about the hardest scene, but do you have a personal favorite? Uh, a favorite scene of all the series? Favorite. Favorite scene from all the. For us to make or? Yeah, your personal favorite scene that you shoot or maybe. Was just My harder. favorite was when Fred and George had the dragon firework and pushed Umbridge out of 
Hogwarts. For me, filming that as well, because we were in, you were in the Great Hall as well, filming that scene was incredible, because we had desks and everything went up in the air, and basically we just had to scream and run around, and that was the best scene to film for us, because we were like, ah! Like running around everywhere. So for me to film, that was my, that was one of my favorite scenes. And also when you're watching it, because we couldn't see all the fireworks when we're filming. So seeing the post production was amazing. Seeing it in the movie was amazing. Did you me. not like the uh, Yule Ball? Remember we had, what's the? No, remember we had like the rock concert. Oh, Jarvis Cocker. Jarvis Cocker, yeah. Do, yeah. do you remember like all the mosh pitting? We had a mosh pit dancing. Like, that that yeah. was one of my favorites by you far. You remember when Jarvis Cocker was DJing at the, at the, the rap, rap party, party and no one cared? <laughs> <laughs> we were just all eating lunch. We had so yep. many fun scenes. But um, to film, I get my first the, the scene where I show how, tell Harry the rules of Quidditch it was great fun. And also, I, that it, there was no pressure because I didn't like, I didn't realize how big the film was yet at that point. It was much a, that was quite a small scene. And then to watch, I loved uh, the scene in all the banders in the first movie. And uh, Devin's phone's just gone up. And uh, I think the first scene, Rickman's first scene when he walks into the potions class, and he just walks in and totally owns it in the first movie. I, I, I adore that. Damn it, Sansa, stop me, I'll stop you. Damn it. Okay. The last one. The last one. Come on. Yeah, make this no. a good one. <laughs> I know. Hi, my name is Maya, and I would like to ask. Which movie do you think is the best one? Which, which part of the Harry Potter movies is the best one? I like the seventh one. I, I like really the love the seventh one. The first. I think the first was more magical. Jeez, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the first movie, I think, was just more magical. Than... Yeah, I don't think Chris gets enough credit for how much he completely nailed the tone yeah. that, and, and created that struggle. world. Yeah. The first, seven, and? I'm going to say the fifth. Fifth. Yeah, Order of the Phoenix for me was, I, love, I just love the film. I love the first beginning of David Yates as well. Pierwszy, siódmy, piąty. Okay, thank you very much guys for your panel. Thank you. Podziękujmy naszym gardom. I zapraszamy was jutro na palet z nimi o godzinie 13. Dziękujemy bardzo.